I always think about this thing of like the the two ideas I always hear people talk about are on one side, people are like choose what you want to do, mm-hmm. focus on it, and stick with it, and mm-hmm. go for it. And other people on the other side, completely other side of the coin, are like. Always be open to doing different things <laughs> and make sure, always have your finger in different pies and just, you know, smorgasbord and take little bits of this, little bits of yeah. that. I mean, those two things are completely at odds with each yeah. other. And I still, you know, as far as my career as I am, I still don't know which one <laughs> holds the most credence, really. I mean, they, they, they're both really viable things, but that's one that I, I think about a lot because you see people who've been really successful mm-hmm. who, have, who have chosen their the place they're going to aim for, and they've just gone for it, mm-hmm. and they've been really successful. Then you also see people who have, they, they, you know, they, they do a bit of arranging or a bit of, you know, engineering or yeah. a bit of DJing and a bit of performing, and they've had a great career as well. So it's that's the one thing that I, I, I would say. It's like, it does, it's, it's very hard to say any hard and fast rules. It's just like, chat to different people and, People find their own route through, don't they, I think? Oh, absolutely. And it's really interesting you say that because I've come across that all the time as well. Not from people saying it to me early doors, but, you know, from me hearing people say it to younger students, if you like, or they're not, not even just younger musicians, you know, yeah. do that because that's what you're really good at or do everything. But I think the thing that, you know, oscillates between these two sort of boundaries of, you know, left and right or whatever it is, some like yeah. structuralist sort of confines of the world is it's the motivation to do either you know if you go on that path it's to keep that fearlessness i think or to yeah i'm going to be fearless and try all of these these things you know yeah yeah i will i will do some engineering i may never have done some before i'm going to learn how to do it yeah of course i'll do a remix yes of course i'll do a dj night you know all those sort of things it's that motivation of fearlessness i think yeah, and I, I think also none of those things are ever to the detriment of your mm. skill set, of course, are they? I mean, like, there's there's so many things. I mean, until I uh, until I started, like, you know, until I had a studio at home and I started getting people over doing sessions, engineering sessions, I used to go to studios when I was, you know, uh, what, doing trumpet sessions before I did any of this. Mm. And you'd have the producer in the in the control room and you'd be like, can, can you just drop me in two bars? Could, and you'd be like, just, I just need two bars in, quick, can, you know being very impatient with producers. Uh-huh. And then you're on the other side, you're like, now it's me, you know, with strings or a brass section behind me being like, I need to think about mic position, <laughs> yeah. uh, saving the parts correctly, labeling the parts correctly, comping as we go, making sure everyone's playing the right notes. Uh, and there's so much to think about. And I think that's just one example of how, when you look at a different uh, technique of, yeah. of music or a different strand of music, it informs your approach to another one. So none of those things are ever going to be detrimental. Like you say, like we talked about the, the reading music thing at the beginning, yeah. you can definitely get into music without, but, and there's, it shouldn't inhibit you from playing music if you can't read music, but mm. it's also not going to hurt your no. musicianship to know what's going on. 